Hi everyone, welcome to this talk by Oxford University Press. This is a series of shorter videos that actually address frequently asked questions. Before I share today's frequently asked question, uh, I would like to invite you to connect with me on my Twitter handle, which is at Jennifer Wathall. Or if you would like to have updates on Oxford University Press resources, please feel free to connect with them also at Oxford underscore IB. So what is today's frequently asked question? Let's have a look. Where can I find higher level paper three resources to help prepare students for this part of the assessment? And this is probably one of the most asked questions that I get in my travels. So first of all, before we start, let's have a look at an assessment overview. So you can see that on the left hand side here, I have the analysis and the approaches uh, assessment outline. And then on the right hand side here, I actually have the applications and the interpretations assessment outline and you can see that with the analysis and approaches for paper one for SL and HL that there is no GDC required. However, for the applications and interpretation, we really do want to encourage the use of technology and GDC, so the GDC is required for all three papers. Now another interesting thing that you might notice when you look at the assessment overview is that in the higher level for both pathways there's a paper three. What is that paper three? Well the paper three it's a 60 minute paper worth 55 marks and basically there are two compulsory extended response questions both requiring both pathways requiring the GDC. And we must not forget that we also have the internal assessment here, which is worth 20% of the overall grade. So now all students in the IB Diploma Mathematics program will complete a personal exploration. Uh, there is 30 hours that's devoted to the actual toolkit, which is uh, using the approaches to teaching and learning. And we recommend that 10 to 15 of those hours are actually for the internal exploration um, in class or outside of class. Okay, so here are some of the headlines, uh, first of all, of what the paper three examination looks like. The first one is that questions can be thought of really as extended closed problems and they will range between 23 and 32 marks. Another important headline is that I mentioned earlier there's two compulsory response questions, the extended response, and they really require some sustained reasoning as students work through these problems. Another headline is that a GDC is required for um, every part, uh, uh, for both pathways, that is, but it may not be required for every part of the question, but it's important that you have the GDC with you. And the th fourth headline is that the first part of each question is on syllabus content, and then this kind of leads to a problem solving context as the question progresses. So what are some other headlines? Well, questions could be presented in the form of words, symbols, diagrams, or tables, or a combination of these. So don't expect that they're just going to be long wordy problems. And also individual questions will develop from a single theme where the emphasis is really on problem solving, leading to a generalization or an interpretation of a particular context. But we have to remember that knowledge of all syllabus topics is required for the paper three uh, examination. Now there is a slight difference in terms of the approach for paper three for the analysis and the approaches and also the application and interpretation. So what is the difference? So typically in the analysis and approaches course, the questions will frequently require students to be able to discover general patterns, to also verify them and informally justify or prove the result. Now for the applications and interpretations paper three, the questions will follow through the solution of a problem in a real world context and using mathematics um, more uh, in an application of, of real life. 
Okay, so we can think of the analysis and approaches, uh, paper three, as uh, kind of being an extension of the criterion B in um, the MYP assessment criteria. And criterion B involves investigating patterns. In terms of the application and the interpretation for paper three, we can think of questions as an extension of criterion D, which is really about applying mathematics in a real life context. So I have some tips to help teachers with preparing students for the paper three. Uh, so my top tip here, the first one is, maybe we can look at the pre-2014 IB portfolio tasks. So as we know, we have a whole bank of different portfolio tasks prior to 2014's examinations. And there are a lot of different questions that we could use to develop and then use them in the classrooms with our students. There were two types of uh, portfolio tasks pre-2014. The first one was a mathematical investigation task, and that really helped to develop these types of skills for our students when we did them. And then we also have a bank of the type 2 portfolio tasks, the mathematical modelling tasks. And you can see that there's a whole list of different skills that that was aimed to develop with our students too. So I think it would be really useful to look at the previous bank of portfolio tasks and use them as a starting point to start developing questions. Okay, tip number two. So tip number two is really about providing students with opportunities to problem solve in an unfamiliar situation through the use of inquiry. And fortunately, you have a lot of investigations and examples in the OUP books. So we've designed a lot of investigations embedded in every single chapter to really put students in an unfamiliar situation and be able to go through the inquiry process uh, by answering the factual and the conceptual questions. Um, we also have adopted an inductive teaching approach to really support students to be able to generalize and also to be able to communicate their deep conceptual understanding after engaging in that learning experience. So what's my next tip? Okay, my next tip, tip number three is, I recommend that we should integrate technology into the lessons, into every mathematics lesson in a meaningful way. So technology is not necessarily a substitution for understanding, but it should be only used when it enhances learning and really helps students to understand on a deeper and higher level. So we have a, a, a plethora of different technological tools here that we can use that I have. So we've got our GDCs that are actually allowed into the examinations. We have all sorts of dynamic graphing software, spreadsheets, simulations, apps, dynamic geometry, and other software, just to name a few. So I think it's important that we try to really integrate technology in a meaningful way. Okay, my last tip for everybody is, really is about collaborating with your colleagues. So whether it's within your department at your school, or if you're the only teacher, I highly recommend that you join a professional learning network. Uh, there's quite a few professional learning network, uh, I think groups on Facebook, there's WeChat, there's WhatsApp, and it's a great, I think, forum for teachers to share resources in terms of the paper three examination. So that's my last tip. We value your feedback about this video. And so if you would like to give some feedback and also receive digital copies of the new OUP books, please scan this QR code. Thank you so much for listening once again to this short frequently asked question video. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.